Hey guys, Fire here from In-Depth Gaming, bringing you another game review. This time we're checking out Mushroom Wars 2. This game is developed and published by Zillion Wales and releases on January 13th, 2022 for a price of $19.99. Uh, Mushroom Wars 2 is a real-time strategy game where you can play in three different modes, two of which are basically the same. There's a single-player campaign that will take place over two different chapters, um, well over a hundred different missions you can play on and embark that will slowly progress through a tutorial-like system to start with that will teach you how to play. You have online multiplayer where you can play matches either 2v2 style or 2, 3, and 4 player matches. Or you can do up to four player free for all matches, which is actually quite fun. So what I'm going to do here is actually while I'm talking, set up a bot match where they're probably just going to kill me off right away. But let you guys kind of see what the game does. Now as you can see, here's some of the multiplayer maps that you're going to play. These are also going to be maps that you play through the single player. There are a ton of different maps and crazy environments and outlets that you're going to be able to play through that... The game really shows off its vibrance and beauty and the way it is and how you play. It's done in a very great manner. Now, the controls are pretty simple. You'll pretty much use your analog sticks with A, B, X, and Y to navigate and select different options, move troops around. The whole premise of this is it's kind of my group of guys is stronger than your group of guys. So you will slowly generate um, these houses that allow you to spawn new troops that you can upgrade. As you can see, every building's got a number, so you're set with a certain amount of initial troops. We're going to let our guy die here real quick, and we'll let the uh, computer AI kind of play here. As you can see, you take over different buildings, whether it's defensive buildings, attack buildings, factory buildings, and your goal is to have the largest army. Whoever can take over the other players and win will win the game now while you are playing the game you can control and adjust the way the troops move around based on sending either 25 50 75 or 100 percent of your troops from one building to another and the strategy part of this game and what makes it real time is the other players are constantly moving and evolving while you are constantly moving and evolving. You have to push and manage everything with a constant changing environment, making sure that you have the leg up on the enemy. Is it worth you risking 50 to 100 troops to take a base when you might be left with only 20 or 30 and completely lose the game? As you can see here, Red's doing a pretty awesome solid attack, but with Red and Blue just kind of neck and neck in each other, Green's just sitting here over on the side and already has an army twice the size of both of theirs and that's kind of the way this game functions from a functionality standpoint it's build the biggest army take over all the objective bases and try to win and defeat out everybody now with this game there's not much more beyond this you can do a 2v2 multiplayer modes if you've got a friend to play with or locally um, or it's just basically a free-for-all crazy wild gambit the story mode although it is kind of a story that tells a little bit it's more just a lot of the same rinse and repeat as you go through different levels. But those levels, like I said, do change as far as their layouts and really how you're presented. I do think the game does an amazing job for new players who aren't used to real-time strategy games, introducing you to just little bits here and there while playing, but also not overwhelming you. As you can see, we're about to be overwhelmed by green just coming in to beat the living crap out of us. And that's kind of the gist of the game, and what you're seeing on screen is, you know, a majority of what this game is. It's troop management, it's area control and resource management all in one as you just try to become the superpower dominating every other player in the game. As far as replayability, um, beyond the story, there's not much there. There is the online multiplayer aspect, although I do fear coming in at a $20 price point, this game might struggle to retain players. I think if this game came in, honestly, through like Xbox Game Pass, it probably would have lended it a better opportunity to survive and be better, but I do think this game will succumb to its price point, which is quite unfortunate, as you can see, you know, just like that viewpoint, you know, we did just die here in the game. I think the game might risk dying here from that standpoint now i know this game has been out on some other platforms so it's not totally new um so if they maybe bring some constant content updates or different building types and stuff it might be able to rejuvenate and liven up this game to last a lot longer but for the most part it's pretty much a game that's built around just a few you know couple minute gameplay skirmishes and rinse and repeat the same go i think it's definitely fun for a good like 20 30 minute intervals but 
from my playing sessions, it's been kind of hard to want to play this game much more than, you know, 30 minutes at a time, because it's a lot of the same, and once you kind of figure out a rhythm and strategy, it's pretty much impossible for you to lose when you play most of the levels, which is a little unfortunate to not have that challenge. It's basically just the game adjusting the, the layouts and setups of where how tower defenses or areas that you capture kind of appear um, from the most part. But overall, though, if I have to give this game any opinion, whether it's buy, sale, or pass, I definitely think if you're a real-time strategy game fan, you probably want to pass. Unfortunately, I think the lack of any type of ever-changing evolutions, like maybe like an integrated card system to affect what your guys' troops do, or maybe some random effects on the map that could happen could definitely add a lot of value, or just a little more meat there that isn't there for me would make it worth it. Otherwise, I would say probably wait for a sale. I think this game around a $10 price point would be more worth it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of game here, but a lot of what's here is just repetitive motions of the same types of content. So it's not a massive amount of just differing content, which is unfortunate. But overall, though, if you guys do have a different opinion or picked up the game, please let me know what you think down in the comments. If you did enjoy this review, um, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'm going to let this game finish out here on the skirmish. I'm going to crank up the volume a little bit. And as always, if you have any questions about the game or want to know more, please let me know down in the comments. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.